Well, welcome to our January meeting. Um, we're going to uh, call the meeting to order. We're going to do a roll call starting from my right with Bill Lane. Bill Lane. Right, Kenny. Now it's your vote from. The North Bend Waterfront Neighborhood Council meeting will be conducted according to parliamentary rules. The President will have the final word on the conduct of the meeting and will cast a vote only in the event the rest of the council reaches a town. The President will recognize the speaker to make their presentation a statement and then he will permit the council to ask questions. He will then open the floor to questions from the audience, and each audience member should introduce themselves by name and street address. No person will speak until they have been recognized by the president. Thank you, Um I know the FYI, Nicole Leo hasn't been to the last few meetings. That's because she's in school tonight. I just wanted to announce that. I know she hasn't been to the last few neighborhood council meetings. Some people have been asking if she's in, but she's us. Uh, has class on Monday nights, unfortunately, and she, I think she's almost done. So I think um, in the springtime, we'll, um, she'll start down being your regular attendee at the meeting. But uh, I can make some announcements on behalf of the city and um, city council, Sal Martino, who is my boss, and also our district city council. Um, I want to assure everyone that the nuisance control ordinance has been assigned by the mayor, so it's legally in effect. And um, I also have an announcement from the Department of Public Works. Um, you can contact me, but right now they are in the uh, process of, uh, of um, getting locations um, where uh, street repair is needed. So DPW is currently compiling a list of locations for permanent repair considerations for the 2013 for the 2013 construction season, which runs from April to November. So if you have a request for a sidewalk that needs repair, you can call me at um, Council La Martina's office, 617-635-3200. Unfortunately, I don't have my jacket on or I have business cards in it, I would give them to you, but our phone number is 617-635-3200. Just call me or if you uh, want to send the neighborhood council an email, we're online at uh, uh, boston.org You can send the uh, request in there, we get the emails regularly, and um, I can forward that list um, or that request to uh, the Department of, um, of Public Works. And that is for sidewalks only, not the street. So if you have a sidewalk issue, just find a way to get that information to me. Um, we're going to do our committee, uh, committee reports next. And uh, Ryan Kenny's going, to, um, Kenny's going to do our uh, residential parking and traffic committee report. Um, no real new updates other than we're trying to get the uh, commissioner attendant at uh, one of these neighborhood to do the next one, the one after that, um, the restructuring and the uh, Boston Transportation Department, we're still kind of held up right now with changing the signage to the north end. Uh, but hopefully, uh, we are on track now. We don't want to do school with uh, uh, Commissioner Tendon's in here to ask some questions about that. Yes? Excuse me. Can you guys up there speak a little more? Sure. Um, I was just saying that uh, <coughs> there's been an effort in the north end to change the visitor parking spots and make them exempt to residents who live in the neighborhood so they can park there beyond two hours. There's been uh, it's been a long process to try to get the signage changed and we're hoping that within the next month or two we're dealing with Commissioner Tinley that that process will, will finally be done. Thank you, Ryan. And um, John, um, John Pregman is our uh, chairman for the Greenway Committee. Thanks. So we're, we're still in the transition as most of them. So there's not a lot to report, but we will and do anticipate becoming an agenda item to discuss a lot of things that have been going on recently. But for tonight, I'd like to do a few things before I pass it to the, uh, Jody, who's representing the Conservancy. Um, the winter lights are still on display, of course. Uh, we went to the lighting of blades down by Rose Wharf last week, which was great. People obviously go down there and uh, texture color to the blade, which is, which is a lot of fun. So I suggest you do. I'm not giving you the phone number because I want you to go down there and do it. Um, rosekennedygreenway.org also lists a lot of these events. But we also, um, as we have are into the new new 2013 year, are looking for any types of programs or events or suggestions that those may have. So we'll, uh, input is welcome. Um, and then one thing we do have coming up is the North End food trucks. <coughs> well, I suppose they're just the food trucks, but they're going to be coming into the North End. 
most significantly Clover, which is a big uh, favorite amongst the, the city and a cupcake. Truck. So uh, look for those. Dates, times will still be determined, but the weekend hours when it's nice, and uh, as we've seen down in Rosemore and around the city, are now coming to uh, North End Parks. And Joey wants to talk briefly about the care zone. Sure, um, thank you. And we're delighted to welcome John to our board of directors. Um, it's already been fun, and, and we're looking forward to uh, here making a real difference with us. So thank you. Uh, we would like to do a, um, a presentation on a new Greenway carousel uh, to the committee, and I think, Stephen, we may be on the agenda for next month. Um, but just wanted to update the committee that we have finished fundraising for the new Greenway carousel, and so we are ready to begin construction and are about to sign a contract with the general contractor and construction will begin on Carousel Park in uh, March. Um, and we're delighted that because we were able to fundraise for everything that um, we wanted, it's really going to have a state-of-the-art ticket booth, um, the winter enclosure so that the carousel will really glow like a jewel box at, at night, and um, just really, really incredible horticulture and landscaping around the carousel. So we'll bring lots of renderings to next month's meeting so that um, everyone can see uh, what's coming up, but just wanted to, to let everyone know that um, construction will begin. I think so, it's worth it to know, too, the handicap accessibility. Yes, thank you. Um, for those of you who don't know, this will be the only handicapped accessible carousel in New England. We, our carousel artist, is crafting two carousel characters. One is a sea serpent, and a child will be able to wheel his or her wheelchair onto the serpent. And the other is um, a character that it doesn't move as much, so any children with any kind of sensory challenges is also going to be able to ride the carousel as well. So we're particularly excited about, about that piece and bringing that to the green line. So thank you for inviting it. Well, of course, that's all been done with private money, right? We, um, it's about 95% private. We did apply for a highly competitive Massachusetts Cultural Council grant, um, and that is the only sort of quasi-public uh, money that's going for the carousel. Everything else is privately funders for. Thank you. Just one more question. Can I have daughter Freddie? One of the um, questions that has come up that people have asked me is, in the interim, yes. between this new carousel being installed, which is scheduled for Labor Day yes. 2013, kind of thing. In that whole summertime period, will we be putting a carousel somewhere else on the Greenwood? You know, we did look into it because it's, you know, we, we know the, the community loves to ride it. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find a space as we're on the Greenwood to make it work. So unfortunately, you know, we won't be having that. Is that an update for the newer meetings or the newer meeting? Amy said you guys are working on that. I think if we can possibly figure it out, we will, but right now we, we haven't been able to. We're working with the operators um, who own the carousel and they haven't been able to find space so far. So, um, you know, fingers crossed something may pop up, but right now it's not looking So there's just be construction there through the course of the summer then? Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you, Joey. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, Dave Lox is going to um, make a quick announcement um, regarding a um, cash pickup every second two days. Um, I'll mention that. Okay. And then you can uh, introduce uh, a man in uniform. So I'll give a brief update on the rest of the city. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for attending. Um, I'll start off with what Stephen just alluded to a moment ago. Um, this really came out of my meeting with State Representative Aaron Michaelwitz on Saturday morning. I had a great one hour meeting with him. I, I said, you know, with all the tr ongoing trash issues in the North End, which we all know are very multifaceted, they don't just pertain to just one issue or one sub-issue, I said, for instance, what's going on in Beacon Hill or Back Bay, in other words, other downtown neighborhoods with similar and yet dissimilar demographics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I said, do they have the same issues? What are they doing to combat those issues? He said, you know, you should get in touch with the Beacon Hill Civic Association. So as a follow-up, Aaron forwarded me this morning an email that the Beacon Hill Civic Association had sent to him on Friday, and it basically had to do with, it said that the Civic Association was interested in residents' experience with trash pickup and recycling in Beacon Hill. So to help the Beacon Hill Civic Association and the City of Boston 
to determine whether current weekly recycling collection on Fridays for that neighborhood is meeting the neighborhood's needs, we asked that the residents fill out a short survey. My idea was well, perhaps we can come up with a similar survey as it pertains to the North End. And perhaps we could hopefully put that on Matt's NorthEndWaterfront.com website and we can get the results. Hopefully enough people will interject with their opinion, vote, and we can send that to the appropriate people or departments in for the city of Boston and go from there. So that's the first thing I want to address. I can give, I'll give a brief public safety uh, update based on the last meeting that was held on Thursday, January 3rd. Once again, public safety meeting is always held the first Thursday of the month here at 6.30 p.m. sharp. It was a pretty quiet month for crime, as Sergeant Liam and Captain Liam know. Um, we didn't have any homicides, <coughs> no sexual assaults, no robberies, no aggravated assaults, no breaking and entering. Uh, there were five auto thefts. Three larcenies, not including car brakes. One larceny from a motor vehicle. Nine motor vehicles were towed. The Boston Police Department issued 56 moving violations, motor vehicle violations, and 250 parking citations, which is probably about 100 or so less than the average. We've seen well in the 300s or even 400, especially in July. We give them a break for Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> I knew you were going to say. Um, the good news is. Captain Lee emphasizes that part one crime in the North End was down for 2012 compared to the previous year. Down in the North End by 10%. Rich Grealish from Suffolk University was in attendance at the meeting. And as far as the crime for the rest of the district, it's actually up 7%, which mostly consists of larceny. So we did okay compared to the rest of the district. Jeremy Fox from the Boston Globe was also in attendance. There were a couple of arrests. One was on December 6th at the corner of Princeton Salem Street. Apparently a gentleman was disruptive, had been disruptive all day. Sergeant Lima happened to be there. Um, he was a really big guy that put up a fight. I think he claimed he had a gun and wanted some food at the time while he was in a store. Appeared to be intoxicated, was from Western Massachusetts. There had been four arrest warrants out for him up in the North Shore area. The second arrest, December 23rd at approximately 2.23 in the morning at 22 Sheep Street. There was a loud party. The attendants of the party or attendees would not disperse. Young professionals, um, I believe the tenant of the apartment where the party was held was being summoned for keeping a disorderly household. And I think they were, uh, those that were arrested were approximately 28 years old, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's all I really have to add for now. And then I'd like to segue into why the police officers are here. You just asked Captain Lee and Sergeant Lee to appear. Not everyone that goes to the public safety meetings attends our monthly council meeting. So I didn't want everything to be duplicative, but I thought it'd be nice to have them show up. And if you have any questions uh, that have been recently passed public nuisance law or anything else, they're here. So, good luck.